The Stones are back and better than ever, selling out tickets faster than you can say, give me shelter. In fact, a few hundred fans camped out overnight for the first shot to see the band when they perform at the New Orleans Jazz Fest this May. And tickets are selling out at lightning speed for the group's first U.S. tour in five years. The band will head out on the road this spring, and if you're itching for a ticket, you better get them fast. Upper level seating is going for at least $200 on Ticketmaster, and I'm so excited to be joined by the Stones' legendary keyboardist today, Chuck Lavelle. Chuck is in the building. Uh, Grammy hey. Award winner, thank you for oh, being right, here. Great. Appreciate it. Uh, first question, though, I guess, is you see, you know, the hot, hot demand for your guys' tour. I mean, how good does that have to make you feel, and how good is it to be back out on the road? It's not bad. Yeah? It's not bad. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, you never know. You, you get a plan, um, you put the tickets on sale, you cross your fingers, say your prayers. Uh, but it's just very heartening to see that the fans still want to come. You know, the band has been together over 50 years, 55 years now. I've been with them 37 years. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> it's a bit of time. It's a bit of time. <laughs> it's a bit of time. And uh, it's always such a joy. I mean, I just love the guys. I love the music. And it's a real honor to be with the band. Well, we have, a, I mean, we have a lot of musicians come in. And we talk to them about, you know, their careers. But yours has been kind of, you know, you've been all over the place. You know, you're the Allman Brothers, Sea Level, in between. But what's interesting is that you almost quit music before the Stones called, right? I mean... <laughs> How did you get that story? No, but it's, a, it's absolutely true. In my other life, I think you know I'm a, um, a tree farmer, uh -huh. and uh, my wife and I run a, a, a bit of property in middle Georgia, uh, forest land. And uh, when this happened, the phone wasn't ringing for me for music, or the recording sessions weren't really happening. I was enjoying learning about environmentalism and land use and forestry. And I came home one day kind of distraught and talking to my wife and, you know, I expressed to her, you know, I'm never going to quit music, but I'm really enthralled with this and, you know, maybe I should just focus on forestry for a while. And she said, well, that's interesting, Chuck, but guess what? The Rolling Stones called you today. <laughs> <laughs> so not everyone gets that call, though. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, when you made that switch, though, uh, we always talk to musicians who kind of come from, you know, not making a lot of money to, to just completely hitting the jackpot, of course, <laughs> when you're successful. I mean, do you remember what you used your first paycheck on? Oh, my goodness. Well, to buy a musical instrument, of That's course. That's what it was? Yeah, it was, was there uh, no splurge where you're like, oh, man, no, I really made it now? Uh, well, to buy a Hammond B3 organ. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, which I still have, by the way. A true keyboard <laughs> oh, right. player really yeah. wants to buy more of his gems, I suppose. Yeah. That, that makes, makes sense. sense. I have to ask you uh, about music streaming, because a lot of musical artists have come out against it um, and saying that it's hurting the music industry and it's hurting artists in general. What are your, what are your thoughts? Genie's out of the bottle, basically. You know, you can't put it back in. It's happening. It is the wave of now. And uh, unfortunately, it has caused a, you know, disruption in the revenue stream. I mean, you get barely anything, 0 .003 cents or something per stream. So unless you're getting uh, the hits like a Beyonce or a Jay-Z or, or some you know, huge artist uh, that gets a bit of revenue from streaming, it's very difficult. You know, in the old days when we had CDs and uh, LPs and cassettes, uh, the revenue streams were much stronger. But it's reality. That's the way it is. And so you look for other revenue streams. Well, you mentioned that, too. I want to mention this. Chuck Gets Big. Yeah. Out now. The new <laughs> Literally, album. Literally. Did I. <laughs> <laughs> I like having the CD in hand. No, I mean, after the holidays, it was a bit... <laughs> uh, you know, what, what about this album has you uh, most excited? Here? Well, the joke is uh, it's with a 17-piece big band mm -hmm. out of Germany called the Frankfurt Radio Big Band. Absolutely superb musicians. And, uh, I was just uh, really thrilled to play with these guys. And I was invited to come over there and do a concert with them, which I did. And uh, they put arrangements on a dozen songs with a big band treatment. Uh, a couple of Rolling Stone songs on there, a couple of Allman Brothers songs, a couple of my own music, mm -hmm. uh, my band Sea Level that you were kind enough to mention. And uh, they just did an outstanding job with the arrangements. And uh, we did the concert. And I made a record out of it. You know, I mean, I, I'm excited to listen to this. And I'm sure, you know, you've got the book here as well. There's so much that, you're, that you've been doing. I mean, I don't know how you find all the time for this, as well as the <laughs> conservation stuff that you mentioned. I mean, how do you fit all of this in there? And what exactly, I mean, now you've got the tour coming. But I mean, what do you do when you're not touring? Is it mostly the conservation work? Is it the book? What are we talking here? Well, you know, I have four books uh, that are out. This is a children's book. Uh -huh. It's probably my favorite book uh, because I think it's so important to engage children at a young age concerning outdoor issues. 
And uh, so the, the title, as you can see, is The Tree Farmer. And the story is of a grandson that goes to his grandfather's tree farm for the first place, not knowing what a tree farm is. And he takes him by the hand and walks him through and explains. And, uh, you know, so when you have a little time on your hands, I, hey, I get up early, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how early we do? How early you get up? Uh, you know, we live in the country. We live on our forest land. And so I tend to get up about 530. And I'm sure that changes, too, when you're on the road. It does. <laughs> I have a question for you just really quickly about some of that, um, that conservation work. I mean, how concerned are you now that you've been seeing? We just were talking about the polar vortex. You yeah. know, you see uh, a lot of news about these wildfires in California. But, you know, we, ha we still have large um, parts of the population that are denying um, climate change and its existence. So how concerned are you for the future and when you think about this? Well, I'm very concerned. And my feeling and my hope is that uh, the children are going to be the ones to turn this thing around. Uh, we've had our shot at it and maybe not done so well, you know. Uh, I, I don't understand the climate change deniers. I, it's beyond me how they can't see what's reality and what's right in front of them. It's undeniable. It's there. There's so many parts of, of uh, the puzzle of, of evidence. It's just insane to me to think that somebody doesn't get it. But uh, there are those that don't get it, and I think it's very unfortunate, and I think we need policies um, and leadership in this country that will turn things around the right way. For sure. All right, Chuck Lavelle, thanks so much. Good luck on yeah. tour. Okay, man. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate Jack. it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.